magazine television series. This week we're at Bull Shoals Lake, 2001, Bull Shoals pro -Am. It's chilly outside and the fishing's tough, but we're sure that the central Pro-Am anglers will come through. You'll see what we mean when we come back right after this. There's no other lake like Bull Shoals. When conditions are right, it can produce monster bass. But for much of the year, anglers consider themselves lucky to catch a limit of two and a half pounders because quite simply, it's not easy to sneak up on trophy bass when the water is so clear you can see the bottom 30 feet down. Just look at the results of Pro-Ams held on bull shows in the past. If you gave yourself two 12 and a half pound limits, took your chances against the field, you would have won three times and been in the running every year but two. The problem is, nobody is going to give you a 12 and a half pound limit. On bull shows, you have to get it the old-fashioned way. You have to earn it. This year, the Central Pro-Am Anglers are coming to bull shows the first weekend in March, and at the end of a bitter cold winter, conditions are tough, with a capital T. But more than 200 of Mid-America's best anglers from six states have braved the chilly weather for the first tournament of 2001, Central Pro-Am's 12th tournament season. The morning of day one is chilly and overcast, with air and water temperature both in the low 40s. And if the tournament itself goes anything like practice, it could be a very long day indeed. One angler who always ranks among the favorites in any tournament on Bull Shoals is Ranger Boat employee Lou Tree. Back in the 1950s, Treat's father used to be a fishing guide with Ranger founder Forrest Wood, and he was one of the best. Treat evidently learned a lot from his father because he's already won two Central Pro-Am events, and he ranks among the circuit's all-time top ten with over 1,000 pounds of bass caught. The weekend before this event, Treat paired with Butch Still to win a team tournament on Bull Shoals, and today he's following the same patterns. Almost immediately, he starts catching fish, and if he can keep this up, he's certain to be among the day one leaders. Another one of the favorites here is Butch Still, who's also a Ranger employee. Like Tree, Still has already won two Central Pro-Am tournaments, including the 1998 Ranger Mercury Pro-Am Championship. When it comes to fishing with light line, Still is one of the best. And just as he has for the past three weeks, he's catching bass by fishing a smoke and red flake tooth bait more than 30 feet deep on six-pound line. Unlike many other Pro-Am anglers who are making long runs up the White River to the Theodosia and Lead Hill areas, still is concentrating on deep brush piles and channel swings near Bull Shoals boat dock. Patiently, he works to lure back to the boat, and so far this morning, his patience is being rewarded. By mid-morning, he already has his limit. Like Treat and Still, Mike Crosby is a Ranger employee who fishes Bull Shoals a lot and is a Central Pro-Am regular. This morning, Crosby and amateur partner David White are fishing shallow for bass that are moving in to spawn, and they've accidentally located a school of crappie. So far, they're catching them one right after another, and if this were a crappie tournament, Crosby would be at the front of the pack. Unfortunately, though, it's not. And so Crosby keeps hoping he can improve on the two keeper bass he already has. Chuck Krim retired from Major League Baseball six years ago and has been pursuing a career as a professional angler. In that time, he's found that it's often easier to get a hitter to chase a hard slider than a finicky bass to chase anything. But today, he's one of the few pro-am anglers with a solid pattern. Krim and amateur partner Steve Mites are working jigs and grubs through submerged treetops in 70 feet of water. Now, fishing like this doesn't suit everyone, but so far, Krim and Mike both have their limits, and Krim is already starting to come. When the Pro-Am anglers return to Bull Shoals Boat Dock for the afternoon weigh-in, Mike Taylor takes the early amateur division lead with 2.35 pounds. Then Curtis Stowers, one of four Central Illinois anglers who drove over eight hours to fish this tournament, comes to the scale. Look at here. Amateur division, this might be your new leader. 
5.35 pounds. A short time later, Joe Switzer brings in this solid three-pounder to take over the amateur division Big Bass League. He's soon passed by Bill Glenn with a 3.2-pound largemouth. But they all have to move aside once Steve Mites comes to the scale. Last to say, looky here, pretty good bag of fish, yes sir. 10.05 pounds, a new leader in the amateur division, ladies and gentlemen. In the pro division, Butch Still is one of the first to weigh in, and he's got a sack to be reckoned with. You get five today, Butch? I think I caught 10 keepers. You caught 10 keepers today, will we be there tomorrow? I hope. He hopes they'll be there tomorrow. We've got a limit of fish. They're going to have a new leader right here. 11.60 pounds. Put your hands together, but still. Roger Dial comes in with this four and a half pounder to take the Pro Division Big Bass League. But it's his only keeper, and he can't overtake still. Neither can Lou Tree, who comes in with three keepers that total 5.95 pounds. Then comes Pro Division rookie Kendall Train. 7.5. 40 pounds, 7.40 pounds. That puts you right on up there about second place. Next is Pete Winters. Winters won the 1996 Pro-Am Championship on Bull Shoals, and he proves he still got the touch with 8.35 pounds. A short time later, Chuck Krim comes to the scales. Uh, you've got a bag of fish also. Yeah, I got five. He's got five, and he's got a little smile on his face. Will they beat 11.60 pounds? They're not going to go that much. That's what Butch, Butch still has. He's in the lead. We've got five right here. They're going to get up there close. 10.15 pounds for Chuck Krim. Good job, sir. Jim Akins moves into contention with a limit weighing 7.85 pounds. But just when Still's day one lead seems secure, Lynn Luther comes to the scales. Well, I'm being say there's a new leader. Not going to be quiet, guys. 10.50 pounds. That's second place in the Pro Division right now. At the end of the first day, Butch Still sits atop the Lunker Lure Pro-Am scoreboard with 11.6 pounds. Len Luther and Chuck Krim are right on his heels in second and third place, with Preston Havens and Pete Winters rounding out the top five. In the rest of the top ten, Jim Akins leads the way in sixth place, but Pro-Am rookie Kendall Trainer and veterans Jackie Davis, Lou Tree, and Larry Herndon are close behind. In the amateur division, Steve Mites holds a commanding lead with 10.05 pounds. Curtis Stowers is nearly five pounds behind in second place, with Charlie Bogard, Keith Bray, and Bill Glenn completing the top five. In the rest of the top ten, it's close all the way, as a mere five ounces separates Kenny Keeter in sixth place from Steve Plank and Mike Birds in 10th. Stay tuned for exciting day two action. We'll be right back. My way. Helpful hints from some of Central Pro-Am's top competitors. In 2000, the Bull Shoals Pro-Am was held later in the year when bass were hitting topwater lures, and Robbie Dodson outdistanced over 120 of Mid-America's best anglers by fishing a red fin and Zara spook his way. Going into it, I didn't think I was on the right bunch of fish to win. I thought they just be keepers, and uh, I knew it was going to be tough, and the bite was real slow. It's been slow all year, and I just went up there, and I just fished the way I thought it would take to win, and I just luckily got bit. I fished nothing but points two days. I fished shallow points and flat points, but most of them were steeper type points, but nothing but points. If it was a steep point, I would start deep, work my way around to the point. If it was a shallow point, I'd pull up dead on the point, go straight up the point, work my way in. If it took too much longer to fish them. But if it's a deep point, which I got most of my fish off the deep point, I'd start on the deep side, and just make 15 or 20 throws on this point, move to another one. I used a white spook, and that's all I used. I threw a blue red fin and a black red fin, but I, I think I caught one fish today and one fish yesterday on red fin. I use 15 on all my line, no matter what, on top water fishing, so I don't really think it matters. On, I'd use 20 if I could throw it to it, but 15 seems to throw pretty good, and it don't matter on top water fishing. I don't think what type of line you use. I really didn't do nothing to this. I'd use a snap on it. I take the ring out, just throw it out there, and just really, real slow. That's about all there is to it. This is a real easy bait to fish. The morning of day two looks just like the day before which means that the Pro-Am anglers know they're facing another chilly ride. 
But they all know that with fishing as tough as it is, almost everyone has a chance to win with a good second day. Day one leader Butch Still returns to the spot that produced his day one limit. He finds fellow competitor Al Ranji already there. But Ranji, in a gesture of good sportsmanship, leaves the spot to Still. Almost immediately, Still finds the bass are still there and still biting. Within moments, he gets another strike. If he can keep this up, Still could be headed for his third Central Pro-Am title. Chuck Krim has returned to the deep bluff end where he caught his limit on day one. By mid-morning, Krim already has his limit, but they're all small Kentucky bass. He's not certain they'll be enough to overtake Still. Krim has positioned his boat in over 120 feet of water and is casting his jig into over 70 feet of water, working it back through submerged treetops. Now, many anglers would be out of their element fishing at such depths, but Krim honed his bass fishing skills in the deep, clear waters of California and Nevada, and he's perfectly at ease. There it is. Feels like a pretty decent fish. This one ought to call that 12 inch out for me. I hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Pete Winters was in fifth place at the end of day one. But so far, his day is not going well. By mid-morning, he is yet to catch a keeper. And unless his fortunes change dramatically, his chances for victory are rapidly diminishing. Kendall Trainer isn't fishing as deep as Krim, but he's located bass on a steeply sloping bank in the same area. Trainer has never fished a Central Pro-Am event, but he's already made his presence known. On day one, he was one of only seven Pro Division anglers to come in with a limit. Like Krim, Trainer has located a bluff with submerged standing timber. That seems to be making the difference. But his day one limit weighed only seven and a half pounds, and he'll need bigger fish than this to overtake Still and the other leaders. By late morning, Butch Still has only three keepers, and it's clear his deep pattern is not going to produce the way it did on day one. So Still switches to a jerk bait and begins working areas he knows hold bass at this time of year. But today, it's no-go. And unless he can find a way to come in with another limit, this one's going right down to the wire. When the Pro-Am anglers return to Bull Shoals Boat Dock for the final weigh-in, the amateur division race is in turmoil. First day leader Steve Mines has come in without a fish. And now he must wait as the other competitors make a run at his lead. The first to do so is Steve Plank. Got a smile on your face. <laughs> I got three. We've got three, but you had some weight yesterday. Let's see what we've got. I'm going to push right on up there. You may end up with a check, young man. Six point five old pounds today. Last thing you want to see what we're going to total out here. Doesn't look like it'll take over the lead, but you're going to be right up there in the hunt. At 9.20 pounds, Steve playing. By the time the third flight arrives, it's clear that rookie Curtis Stowers is the only competitor who can overtake Mike's, but he'll need nearly five pounds to do it. Let's see here. Hey, we might get, this guy may get in the money. He's got one here today that weighs 1.90 pounds. In the pro division, Jim Akins comes in with four bats that weigh a total of 6.9 pounds and jumps into the lead with 14.75 pounds. Next is reigning Pro-Am champion, Toby Hartzell. You got a bag load over there? Not today. He says it's better than he thought he was going to have. It looks like going to weigh 7.40 pounds today. Then Chuck Krim comes to the scales. How many fish you got, Chuck? He's got a limit over there. Look out, Jim Akins. Look out. We've got a limit here. 8.80 pounds. We've got a new leader in the pro division. 18.95 pounds. Chuck Krim. Right behind Krim is Kendall Trainer. Kendall's got a bag of fish here that weigh in at 6.15 pounds. Finally, it all comes down to first day leader, Butch Still. You had, uh, had the lead yesterday at 11.60 pounds. Uh, 
We've got a leader out here, Chuck Trim, is taking over here at 18.95 pounds. Uh, you know, we're we going to, oh, he's got four finish. May get close here, ladies and gentlemen. Looky here.
Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week on the Fishing Magazine Television Series. The Fishing Magazine Television Series is brought to you by Ranger Boats, where they still build them one at a time so you can fish hard, run strong, and rest easy. Bass Pro Shops, where you get more outdoors for your money. ADM Alliance Nutrition, committed to excellence in animal nutrition. Lunker Lure and Hog Collar, quality builds confidence, and confidence catches fish. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, take on the world. Pinpoint Electronics, find fish where you never knew they existed. And Central Pro-Am Association, the leader in Pro-Am Bass Terms. information about subscribing to Fishing Magazine or joining Central Pro-Am Association, call 1-800-349-5316 or visit our website at www.centralproam.com.